to do something different, so I decided to get creative. It's all made from books. That's, I can see that's that. That is clever. upcycling right there. Uh, Renelle has got in touch to say, too many hours sewing, but we have a happy Elmer the Elephant off to nursery. That's Look really at the colours. Impressive. Incredible. That stitching. Well done. Harlan says, my son Monty is dressed up as a stick man. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, and Lindsay. So behind Mr. Tickle there, that's a teacher. Lindsay, as a teacher, says it's only the teachers that are dressing up in the school. Two questions. Why are you holding the fun just for the teachers? And two, how is she getting anywhere? I don't that? know. I don't know. It's going to make for some interesting classes. And Michael says, your deputy editor, Victoria, <laughs> may be a little bit tired today. She was up late making Sophie's tights and tiger food for her daughter, Juliet. Look at that. Very good. Well done. Oh, we're impressed. Well played. Well done. Right, in just a moment, she's finished filming and she's almost ready to pop as Emma Dell's Lucy Pardita hurtles towards her due date. We talk <laughs> about her battle to get pregnant and the realities of IVF. And whether you want to flatter a less than toned tummy or make the most of a curvy bottom, Gok is here in around 15 minutes with a body shape masterclass. Time first to check in with those loose women now. Good morning, ladies. What are you talking about this lunchtime? Oh, hey, Holly and all right. Today on Loose Women, we are going to be revealing the most ridiculous split in showbiz history and asking is there ever an easy way to end a relationship? <laughs> We've got two fiery debates for you. Is four years old too young to teach a child about sex? And how easy is it to get over the emotional scars of a crime? One of us discovered burglars had broken into her house with a pickaxe in broad daylight. And today's guest is currently, well, he's limbering out with our Katie Price <laughs> in the green room. <laughs> Conley, he's going to be attempting a death-defying stunt live. <laughs> so don't miss it. It's happening at 12.30. Thank you very much. With you. He's limber, Brian, isn't I he? Know. He's limber. He needs a little impressive. bit more of a push, but he's limber. Right, competition time now. And here's Steve Wilson with your chance to win £40,000 in cash and a brand new mini. But that's not all. Somewhere in this warehouse is a new car, the latest treats and a bank account boost worth £40,000. All we've got to do is find them. As it's all on our fabulist, and you have another chance to win the lot. A brand new Mini Cooper Clubman. It comes with everything you'd expect. Heated front sports seats, built-in sat-nav and rear parking assistance. You'll also receive every single one of these gorgeous gifts and gadgets, including two of the latest Nike Plus watches, Louis Vuitton luggage, KitchenAid appliances, along with colourful Joseph Joseph kitchenware. In fact, over £10,000 worth of top treats. There's also a further £40,000 thousand pounds in tax-free cash to spend on anything you like so for your chance to win everything on the fabulist text win to 86060 text cost two pounds plus one standard network rate message go to the website entries cost two pounds call 09068 786060 calls cost two pounds plus your network access charge or post your name and phone number to day 0717 p.o box 7558 derby de10nq entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 3 p.m. on Friday the 3rd of March. Good luck. Good luck indeed. Now, she's one of the feistiest women on the box in her role as Emmerdale's Chaz Dingle. But behind the scenes, actress Lucy Pargeter has been fighting her own battle to have a second baby. Well, after 11 years of trying and two rounds of IVF, Lucy is now expecting not one baby, but two. <laughs> Although it was far from an easy journey. And welcome. You look Thank fantastic. You. Thanks. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm all right. Yeah, not bad. I'm, I'm glad I've finished work now, so now I can relax and, yeah. and hopefully enjoy it. But tight and uncomfortable. I bet. And they're fighting each other. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, full up with babies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, listen, the first time round, because you've got Lola already, yes. haven't you? She's and this, 11. She's 11. So, in your 20s, you tried, but you weren't, she just happened. She, was she just happened. Easy. I mean, it was very quick with me and Rudy when we met. You know, six months after we met, we got pregnant. We weren't not trying, we weren't trying. It just kind of happened. And that's when afterwards we kind of thought, well, that's going to happen again. So, we left it completely up to nature again. But we, we spend our lives kind of going, it's not the right time to get pregnant. If you're a career woman, if you've got a job, it's kind of when is the right time, you know? Yeah. So we just left it up to nature and then nature didn't take its course and it didn't happen. And then I was getting older and women, you know, aren't aware of how their eggs deteriorate yeah. and the egg numbers deteriorate as you get older as well. 
uh, until we started looking into it and kind so of thought I'm getting older. So what did you find out then? So when, because I think you're right, I think a lot of women suddenly go, oh yeah, right, this isn't happening to me, let me go and check. And yeah. then they go and check and then they're suddenly given all these stats and figures that you sort of go, why have you kept this such a secret? Why aren't you, didn't you well, tell me this that's the ago? thing, I think there's a massive chunk of education that needs to be given to women about not being able to get pregnant, not the fact of don't, you know, just stop yourself getting pregnant for loads and loads of years while you're doing your career. But getting pregnant, it can be, and often is as you get older, an awful lot harder. Um, so uh, we just left it and just kind of thought, right, OK, well, we'll go to the doctors, get checked out. He got checked out, I got checked out. I've always had heavy, p painful periods, so I had a couple of laparoscopies where they look inside to see if anything's going wrong. There was a tiny bit of endometriosis, which yeah. is scarring, which they took off, but that shouldn't have had any effect yeah. on fertility. Uh, so yeah, and then, and then they, do, they do the regular checks. They yeah, check his see, sperm and they check oh, he was firing eggs. on all cylinders. Oh, I had him. <laughs> yeah, which is very proud really. of that. Good um, news, <laughs> but quite frustrating because then you're going, well, what is it, then? Because you just want to. At it. least if you know what it is, you might have a chance of diagnosing it, sorting it out, and yeah. getting a, on a road to treatment. But there was no reason. No, there was nothing. You know, they looked at both of our stats, both of our my egg reserves, his sperm. And um, everything was fine. It just wasn't happening. And you're having to keep it all a secret. From work, From work yeah, right. yeah, for the first time round. Because that's also a problem. If you go to your employee and say, oh, I'm planning IVF, then, of course, they think, well, if it works, in nine months' time, you're going to be off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't really want to give them the indication that you're, you're, you might be off in nine months because it affects storylines, yes, it affects... Of everything. So you had to take, then, some measures. Yeah, as in kind of doing it... <laughs> in lunch times, after work. And this is the IVF, this is IVF, the injections? Yeah. Because explain how it works then for anybody that's starting this journey, really, because it's not... Don't be scared, please. Yeah, that's that's the one thing. Don't be scared. It is fine. And it, millions of women do it, and it's, it's fine. It is hard, but, you know, you do it. You inject yourself, which gets quite easy. You know, you just get quite used to squeezing Is it daunting for you at the, the start? Um, I think so, but I've always been that kind of person that just puts things on a list. Yeah. So it was just another thing on the list. It was just another thing of injections and so is it a day one daily? How does it work? Uh, well, it depends what protocol you're on. There's yeah. short protocols and there's long protocols, which means it just takes a different period of time. And I also went on something called quad therapy, which means I carried on my injections during the first three months yeah. of pregnancy. So I had two injections a day, including and tablets and suppositories and all the all lovely things, things all sorts of things. Does it make you feel funny? I mean do you feel uh, high and low? Is it like because I mean imagine your hormones are already yeah all over the, shop. the first round we had I found an awful lot harder um, I put on an awful lot of weight a lot of bloating a lot of emotional all over the place mm. and it's hard as a couple as well because the man can often feel like he's just not having anything to do with it mm. Mm. but the second time round once we found the right clinic and the right environment to do it it was an awful lot easier and how long was this process because it is difficult enough to try and conceive without having the treatment mm. but this like you say you're taking it to work you're going home you and Rudy are having this this not battle between yourselves, but battle to try and fulfill this desire that you've had for 11 years yeah um, so just how difficult did it become well, it, it, it was fine once we got going, you know, it was five weeks of kind of injections and then you grow the eggs, basically. They, they stimulate your ovaries to produce multiple eggs. So you're carrying around grapefruit-sized <laughs> follicles inside you and then they harvest the eggs. So that's the hardest bit, is growing all the eggs. Yeah. We've got 19 that fertilise, wow. but then day by day some of them kind of die or crumble or and then we were left with four that went to day five which is the optimum time to put them back in right talking then... of optimum <laughs> not one two yes yeah that was rudy's idea wasn't it <laughs> yeah two you just said he two was in, potent yeah yeah so put two so you knew that it could have ended up with the twins yeah but because we put two in last year and it didn't they didn't take i kind of thought well the the chances are just one if one takes that'll be brilliant and but i kind of knew because i just, just knew, knew. And then we did the scan and then I saw two sacks. And it oh, is. Yeah. Wow. You've got twins. And you yeah. know what the sex of the baby are. Two girlies. You've got two girls. Yeah. So all the girls. So Rudy is totally outnumbered by women. Yep. <laughs> and they're all going to be feisty like their mum. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Hope I do feel sorry for him. But... Oh, <laughs> all right. We'll give him a hug. No, yeah. it's absolutely brilliant. So Lola's going to have little sisters. And she she's is. been incredible. You've, you've really involved her with this whole IVF process I think it's well. so important. I didn't want anything to happen behind her back. I wanted yeah. to be totally open with her. We both did. She's been to 
scans, she's been to the doctor's appointment where we decided how many to put in. She knew about the whole process about how it works and that they grow them and, you know, how they turn into cells. Mm -hmm. And so she's been through the whole thing with us. Yeah. And uh, an 11 year old girl must understand all of this. Now she must be so excited. <laughs> she is. So excited. She is. She's got specific jobs that she's going to have to do, Lolly. Like Remember? babysit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing by the time she's 15, 16. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. You've got this all out. Like, you've yeah, got it sorted. Um, and you're away, obviously, you know, you're away from Emmerdale now. You've finished. Yeah, I finished on Tuesday. Do we know how she exits? How long are you? Well, I mean, can't really ask you how long you're away I'm for. I'm not but are you... away for very long, to be quite okay. honest with you. And it's not a big, we're not leading people up the garden path. We're not saying, you know, something massive's going to happen. Okay. I'm just disappearing for a bit and then I'll And be then back. coming back. Okay, yeah. we'll have to watch. And well done for being so open about it because I think it helps lots of women because women don't. Yeah, I think it's one of those weird ones, isn't it, that people don't really talk about. I wish people reason. would talk about it more. Yeah. I really do. Alex Jones did a brilliant fertility show mm -hmm. yeah. a few months back before she announced that she yeah, was pregnant, right. and I really want to do something in raising awareness yeah. of fertility for older women yeah. because it's something that isn't spoken about and it should be. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank and you. Good luck. We wish Thank you well. You. And we wish you happy birthday for yesterday. Oh, happy birthday! Congratulations. Fortieth yesterday. Oh, yeah. happy birthday! Yeah. Oh, oh, birth. Hurrah! Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> And good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Will you bring them in? I might do. Yeah, yeah just bring yeah. them in. Bring, bring all the babies they in. Stay here. <laughs> Actually, they don't want to stay on this sofa. Right, <laughs> coming up, we've got Gok. He's after the break. Is this normal? Is this meant? Am I doing it right? And then you meet other people and think, no, this is.